Uh, but this is one of the features that I offer to the coaches when uh, members get a hold of me uh, about a concept or about something. I kind of try to dive into it a little bit deeper. So um, appreciate you asking the question as well. Uh, I did mention a, a few times that I use motion a lot. And I have a lot of trust in my players, the way that we coach them, the way that we communicate with them, uh, that they make the reads and they do um, – they're constantly moving the ball. They're constantly moving themselves and we're looking where we can attack and where we can take advantage of things. And I gave you some of those principles the other day. Well, I want to give you some of those actions you're talking about. I, I don't have this all in one place right now. Um, so this is going to be, um, kind of the next best thing until I get that all put together. But the first action, and you might be familiar with some of these, uh, I'll just give you how we use them a little bit. The first action that I use a lot is called the loop. And in a loop, all we're doing basically, if our point guard has the ball, let's say the two is here, we're dribbling at the two. And when we dribble at the two, the two is going to make a shallow cut to replace the one. The first thing this does for us is as the one dribbles over, he can turn the corner and while the two is looping. So we're really kind of running off of X2. So we got X2 here as two goes over. As two makes that cut, X2 is going to be going with him, and we're going to try to run off of that a little bit. So that's one option that we can use. Other times, they're just dribbling the ball over like we have here, maybe to get it into the to post. Maybe it's to uh, set up a, a certain uh, look. We're trying to isolate somebody. Um, there's lots of different things, but we use loop more than anything. Two advanced concepts with using a loop are going to be the – when the one dribbles over, our two, we'd teach them to have the option every once in a while, go screen. Instead of looping it, screen, and then they can turn the corner that way. They might be able to get a shot off of it, but that makes the defense react differently to you. And that's the whole premise of our motion offense. Get the defense to react in a different way than they normally would. Uh, uh, and more advanced involving three players, we have our four trail most of the time. So if this was our setup and we call the loop, we would loop this two over. We'd send the four down and we'd screen there and getting this two to come up. And now we're just going to reverse it back for a shot or a rip and a drive, something like that. So we've used three players now. And the other players on the floor, we would position accordingly. Uh, maybe we want to put our five over here and put our three in the corner. So we're really spreading the defense out. Um, now, this isn't a particular play. This is an option. So this is something that we have taught them, that we've drilled probably in a three-on-three -three scenario, then to four-on-four, -four, and then five-on-five. -five. Uh, but we would scout it and say, you know what, a, a four-down screen for two may work really well here. Um, and maybe after a timeout, we draw this up to get everybody on the same page. But in motion, we want these actions to happen. Uh, another thing you'll find your four doing is setting that screen and then sliding down. So if our five wasn't there, maybe we were playing in a five out, we could do a quick hit right inside there. And we've really extended this three, uh, X three here. So it could be another pass to the corner or if X three doesn't come over, we have a shot right there. So lots of different things there, but those are all off the action of a loop. So uh, that's kind of getting into some advanced things, but loop is the number one uh, action that we use. The second most common act action that we use is called an exit. And this is when we want our point guard to be able to move the wings. So say we have our two and our three spread here. An exit is really these, these people are replacing each other. They're just going right here and replacing. This works extremely well against a zone. All these actions can be used against a zone. But when you run an exit, you're getting at the very minimum, you're getting X2 and X3 to change position. Even if they get used to it and they say, I'm going to stay on one side of the floor, X3 comes over, waits for two to come through. X2 comes in, waits for the three to come through, and then they've got to adjust to them. So as the three comes running around the corner, three's got a head of steam, X2 doesn't. So we get that ball in there quickly, let's say. What that's going to do is X2 is behind. So it could be a rip through and we're going to drive with it. They're behind, so we're going to get into the middle. I mean, there's different things that you can do out of it. You could have your post player screen if you want. You could uh, be running this with a 1-4 high set. So if we, we did that with a 1-4 high, and maybe you don't run anything out of the 1-4 high. Like, there's no plays, or maybe this is something you do use out of, the, out of it. But I have found out of the 1-4 high, you run your four and your five up here. You got your two and your three. You call an exit. 
right there we're crossing underneath the hoop is the idea on that right there you throw off the defense and it's a great opportunity for your post players um, to get involved in the action in a little different way so as that's happening maybe they screen up you know there's lots of possibilities that you could have them do here but again these are all reads the point guards taking a look at it you got to have confidence in your point guard to be able to do that if you wanted to call them out a play give them a name you certainly could but we just yell exit these players cross side to side everybody kind of reads what's going on and then we react from there so exits huge uh, especially versus a zone uh, but man to man we really like that stuff as well uh, if our post players were low just real quick um, the exit might be something like this so we tell them don't go the same route every single time make your x in the center of the lane so one guy curls up the other guy you know you can curl up as well but it really gets them um, gets the defense kind of messed up and then we got to take advantage of, of whatever wherever they messed up we got to see it so that's it. That's an exit for you. The third one that we use is called a through. This is where we move our four and we're going to take, let's say our two, three, maybe we're playing a four out, one in type thing. And our, our players might be down in the corners a little bit more. Um, they're a little high right here. But the one again has the ball, yells out through. That tells this player you're going through to the opposite corner. That action opens up a lane. Again, our five would need to recognize this. Might move over to that side as well. So now what it looks like is going to be this. Look at, you've created a double gap right here to drive. If you got a quick point guard, there's a drive. This player drops the corner. We got a kick opportunity. We can hit it to our five right there. Uh, our two is going to come behind and replace, so we can always kick it back if we want to. So there's lots of different things that um, you can do out of that, but the through opens a huge gap for driving opportunities. Now, everything I'm showing right now is with the one having that ball, you can run this with any of your stuff. If your two had it, your three had it, they could call a through, they could call a loop, they could call an exit. Um, it just kind of depends what you're comfortable with. Uh, we had some players this year that had the ability to play more than one position. So if our three, say, brought the ball up top and they had it, we you had free reign to run this exact same stuff. I've had years where our point guard really is the best ball handler decision maker and the only one, so we, we primarily kept them doing it, but just kind of depends the strength of your players. Uh, so that's a through. Always the trailing big going completely through the paint down here uh, to the opposite corner. So we're clearing them all the way out to the corner. That's another action that we, we use um, quite a bit. A, an action that we use a lot with any of the continuity stuff, I brought that up. We run the flex and we run some shuffle cut once in a while. Um, this action works well. Uh, we call it a switch. So if depending on, on where our players are, let's kind of do one of these again with four out. Uh, all, all a switch is saying is whoever's on the opposite side, it wouldn't necessarily have to be the four, you guys are going to switch. So it might be a screen. It might just be a, an exchange right there. Getting that action there. When these players aren't paying attention, this happens quite a bit. They're playing tight and they switch. There's a driving lane for you. If they're playing off, since one has the ball over on this side, X3 is sagged in because the three is way out here, two passes away. X4 is tight. Here's what happens on that switch. You make it a shallow switch. This player comes up. X4 stays with him. X3 is caught there. It's a quick shot right there. We just recognize it. We pass it. We shoot. Or... Um, Three gets it, turns a corner, drives inside, and see what we can get that way. So uh, this is here's an, a more advanced concept, um, and I guess this would be a sixth one for you. And I've got one more other than this. But anytime that we get a drive up here at the elbow, whoever is in uh, this opposite spot is going to cut. And you will be amazed at how many times you are going to get a pass down here for a layup uh, somewhere in the paint there. Uh, your five may just stay out knowing that there's a drive there. Um, depending on if you have a big man or not. If it's a big man, you might move him in there. If you don't, you keep him out. But anytime there is a drive in into this uh, middle area by the, by the free throw line, we want to go ahead and we want to cut that. Now, our one is going to space out. That's still going to give us a shooter over here. So three gets it, one spaces out, two cuts through, uh, really kind of messes the defense up. And again, you got to look for some things. That's more advanced uh, level stuff. But um, certainly, if you have good players, they could pick it up pretty quickly. And then the last one, and this is really off of um, the read and react, or not the read and react, but oops, 
Uh, this is off the dribble drive. Is a pitch. Uh, we threw this in there because it was so effective uh, with the players that we've had in uh, these last few years. We're trying to drive down here, get this guy coming off, and we're going to pitch it back to him. If you got a good shooter, it could be a pitch for a shot there. It could be a pitch for a drive if we wanted. Um, there's just a simple action there. Most defenders play off this so far. They're not ready for it. If they play up on it, the drive is open if your four is versatile at all. And maybe your number, your four is not out here. Maybe it's your three or your two, whatever system you run. Um, but when you start putting all these together, when you start looping things and exit and through and all that, your players get used to it and they just do it kind of automatically. The other thing is you can put these together in a way. We're going to run a loop um, pitch. So we, we kind of put them together, and now they become a little bit more play-like. But when your kids get this, they, it's it's fun, and they start to they'll do it on their own, and they'll say, "Hey, coach, I think this is really going to work. Can we try this?" And they start being creative with it. And again, it's all about scouting. It's not about you know, hey, you can't call a play. It's can the defense scout that and know what's going on. Um, so if we're going to loop somebody and then we're going to pitch it, we, there's two ways that we could run this. Let's loop our four. So we're dribbling here. We loop the four. You can loop anybody you want. Okay. As soon as we loop him, we're going to turn the corner down here and we're going to send our four who's just come up downhill. So now we get that pitch off of it. So two simultaneous actions, really hard to guard. All right. So that um, is where we could put it together. We could run an exit loop. So an exit loop would be where we're going to have three, actually four players now moving. Our loop is going to happen between our one and our four up top. Our exit's going to happen between our two and our three down low. We've now made four defenders move at once, and they're not positioned perfectly like you are in a four-on-four -four shell, and they're down and they're digging and everything, and nobody's moving anywhere. You've got four people moving trying to figure out what the heck is going on. All that movement might be just to free up your five-man to come in here and seal. So, I mean, there, there's lots of ways that you can do it. It's just um, pointing it out to your players. Again, three on three into four on four into five on five uh, is the, the best way to do it, in my opinion. But those are the five actions I wanted to show you. Um, and really, I threw in that other one, so we've got, a, we've got a sixth action in there as well. So hopefully this helps you out. If you ever want to chat a little bit more about it, um, feel free to, to let me know, and I'll be glad to try to put something else together for you. It makes a little more sense maybe. But these are the motion actions I'm talking about. You call it, your players do the action, and then you allow them to read whatever's in front of them, um, take the shots that are available, make the moves that are available, but they got to share the ball, and they have to be willing to move, not just stand. All right, so, again, Coach, there you go. Hopefully that helps you out.